نحمد و نسلی و نسلی مولا رسول الکریم اما بات فعود باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الناس قد جاءکم برحان من ربکم صدق اللہ العظیم ان اللہ ملائکت مسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلم تسلیما Respected scholars, leaders of Ahl Sunnah, my honorable brothers, elders, my mothers, my sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is a weekday. Tomorrow is also a weekday. We will involve ourselves in the zikr of Rasulullah and end it with the zikr of Allah. We decided to speak on the physical attributes of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The outer beauty and his inner beauty. Sufis mention perfection is Rasul. Rasul is perfection. So if you look at the hands of Rasulullah not only the hands of the Prophet were the most perfect hands physically. But within creation, they were the most powerful hands. And not just the most powerful hands, they were the most merciful hands. Combination of the three is equivalent to Muhammad Rasulullah. Our Rasul is perfect. Right? And it begins from his name. Muhammad. The most praised one. Who is Muhammad? The one who is praised the most, continuously praised. Not just praised. The most praised, and not just the most praised, continuously praised. What does this mean? If someone is praised in the south and not in the north, he is not Muhammad. Who is Muhammad? Someone who is praised in the north, south, east and west. Someone who is praised in the present time and not in the past is not Muhammad. Who is Muhammad? Someone who is praised past time, present and future. Who is Muhammad? The one who is praised in this world, in the ocean, in the first heaven, second, third, fourth, fifth, in Arsh and Kursi, in Sidratul Muntaha, in Jannah. Who is Muhammad? Who is not just by praised by the creation, but by the creator himself. This is why Hassan bin Sabit said, Ma in madahtum Muhammadan, I do not praise the Prophet by my words. My words become praiseworthy by the name of Muhammad. This is why who is Muhammad? Every name within the creation, every name within the creation needs a praiser to be praised by his praises. The name which makes the praiser praiseworthy is the name Muhammad. Ask Hassan bin Sabit, what granted you this maqam? He will tell you one thing. I only did one thing. Praise Rasulullah Muhammad. And scholars mention the one who is Muhammad He is the most praised. The one most praised cannot have flaws. Do you understand this? 
So the one who has flows cannot be Muhammad, the one who is Muhammad cannot have flows. The one who has faults cannot be Muhammad, the one who is Muhammad cannot have faults. <coughs> Hence the Sufis mention, the absolute perfect Lord revealed his perfect book upon his perfect creation that resulted into the perfect religion of Islam. <laughs> this is Muhammad. Now his name is perfect. His name is perfect. Ya Yohannas, Qad Jaakum Burhanum Min Rabbikum O people, indeed has come to you Burhan from your Lord. What has come to you? Burhan. Burhan has two meanings according to Mufassirun. One is evidence, one is miracle. So has come to you evidence from your Lord or miracle from your Lord. Whichever meaning you take, is tafsir is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu Whether you take the meaning of evidence, whether you take the meaning of miracle, has come to you Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the importance of evidence, ask a lawyer. When you make a claim, you need evidence. I did not commit this crime. Evidence. I am innocent. Evidence. I was not part of that accident. Evidence. I saw this city which is very beautiful. You say, I need to see it. I need evidence. I saw this man who is very, very nice. I need evidence. Yeah. For everything, for every claim, you need evidence. And the evidence of the existence of Allah is Muhammad. Allah. 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 Narrated in Abu Dawood, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam purchased a horse from a Bedouin. And as the Prophet peace be upon him walked towards the house to get some money, this Bedouin started walking slowly. Others started bidding. So he said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, buy, give me, buy this horse from me or I'll sell it to someone else. Prophet Sallallahu said, you already sold it to me. He said, no, I did not. He said, no, you sold it to me. He said, I did not. Then this Bedouin said, I did not sell it to you. Bring me a witness. Allah. Allah. Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala who was walking past. He said, I bear witness. I bear witness, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam purchased this horse from you. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Khuzaymah, Khuzaymah come here. What are the basis of your evidence? You were not present when I did this business with the Bedouin. He said, Ya Rasulullah, bitasdeeq ka Ya Rasulullah. You have said it, it is enough for me. What does that mean? You, have, you are the evidence. Khuzaymah is saying, you are the evidence. Ya Rasulullah, your testimony, you have said it. That is enough for Khuzayma. I don't have to be there to see you doing the business. You have said it. You are the evidence. You are the lead. You are Burhan. And that is enough for, for me. Why? What does the Sufis mention here? Khuzayma is saying, Ya Rasulullah, I have not seen Jannah. You have said it. I believed in it. I have not seen the hellfire. You have said it. I believe in it. I have not seen the Qabr. You have said it. I believed in it. I have not seen Akhra. You have said it. I believe in it. I have not seen angels. You have said it. I believe in it. I have not seen Sidratul Muntaha. You have said it. I believed in it. When Khuzayma can believe in Allah without seeing him because you have said it, why wouldn't I believe you have purchased this horse? <laughs> Yes. This is why the Sufis mention you can say La ilaha illallah Muhammad La ilaha illallah all your life All your life You will not be considered a moment Until you say Muhammad or Rasulullah Until you say This is evidence The other meaning is miracle Our Rasul is evidence Our Rasul is a miracle now, if you take the meaning of miracle, as far as Burhan is concerned, what does that mean? We have sent you as a miracle. So other prophets were sent with miracles. Our Rasul was not only sent with miracles, but sent as a miracle. <laughs> sent as a miracle. His hair was miracle. His eyes were miracle. His ears were miracle. His speech was miracle. His silence was miracle. His taking every step was miracle. Every breath he took was miracle. His tabliq was miracle. His dawa was miracle. His lectures were miracle. His family were miracle. His companions were miracle. 
His miracles did not just stop until he was physically here with us. Abu Bakr was his miracle. Umar was his miracle. Usman was his miracle. Ali was his miracle. Muhyiddin ibn Arabi was his miracle. Junaid Baghdadi was his miracle. Zulnoon Misri was his miracle. Ghosse Azam was his miracle. Harim Nawaz was his miracle. This is why all the awliya of Cape Town from Sheikh Nuru Mubeen to Hazrat Sayyid Ghaini Shah to all the Sufiya and the awliya, whether it's Hazrat Basha Peer, whether it's Hazrat Sufi Sahib, who are these? They are not just karamat and maqamat and mazarat. They are those rays of that light which reside in Madina al They are the evidence of the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sufis question, you know the seal of prophethood was between his two shoulders? Everyone agrees? And this is also an evidence for prophethood. Someone questions you, are you a prophet? You show him the seal. Sufis, Sufis question, how? Why, why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to him in his right hand? Maybe some, somewhere in front so he could show it easily. Behind the two shoulders? <laughs> they say his face was enough. <laughs> They say his, his face was enough. Listen, when you listen to someone, you listen to him, you cross-examine -exam him, you, criti crit you know, criticize him. If you want to listen to him, you, you tend to ask him questions, cross-examination, and then you agree with him or you don't agree with him. This is the reality of today. Whether it's a preacher or a teacher, or even your father at times, you, li you, want to li you listen, logically you understand them. But the face of our Rasul, had answers to millions of questions. Hazrat <laughs> Abdullah ibn Salam heard him, looked at him. No question, no arguments, no cross examination. Looked at him, he said, I saw his face. When I saw his face, I knew this face cannot be a face of a liar. <laughs> yani your face is a miracle as well as an evidence. No question asked. And this is why when we talk about the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we started from his name, perfect name. Then look at his beauty. Look at his beauty. And I'm going to narrate a beautiful incident to you. This is mentioned in Imam Hakim in his Mustadra at tabrani various Mahadisun have mentioned this. The story of Hijrah. When he is going with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, and they stop at a place and they are hungry and thirsty. This is the house of Ummah Ma'bad. House of? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi walks in with Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Ummah Ma'bad was a very hospitable woman. She would feed, give food, drink to those who travel. But when the day Prophet Sallallahu arrived, she didn't have anything. <laughs> Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, what about that goat? She doesn't have milk. She said, no, the goat is weak. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, no, bring it here. For Masaha Biyadi, he placed his hand and prayed to Allah. The goat started giving milk. It gave so much milk that every container in the house of Ummah Ma'bad was filled with milk. Why are you surprised? These are not ordinary hands. These are not just the hands of me and you. These are the hands of Rasulullah Allah. Quran says, Ya Rasulullah, those who take bayah with you, take bayah with me. Quran says, Ya Rasulullah, when you throw, you do not throw. It is Allah who throws. These are not ordinary hands. Someone asked me, how was it possible for Sayyidina Ali to pick up the gate of Khaybar that 70 individuals could not pick? I said, why are you just looking at the hands of Ali? Look at those hands who sent Ali to Khaybar. 
sent Ali to Khaybar. These hands belong to that individual who moved sun from his place, who split the moon into two. Why wouldn't Ali pick up the gate of Khaybar? This is the maqam. So these hands. And then Prophet had made Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and then left. She didn't ask for the name. When the husband came, he saw the house enlightened by noor. He said, something must have happened today. Went and spoke to his wife and said, who came? And she didn't ask the name. And she said, Mubarak came. <laughs> who came? Mubarak came. Mubarak came. The husband says, describe him to me. <coughs> describe him. And look at the description of Umm Ma'bad. She says, Ra'aytu rajulan, zahiran wada, ablajan waj, hasan al khalq. I saw a man, striking appearance, illuminating face, best handsome, perfect creation, not too fat, not too thin. Not too fat? Evenly proportioned. Physically built yet delicate. Look at the description. Physically built yet delicate. His eyes were white. The black of his eyes were extremely black. The white of his eyes was extremely white. And his eyelashes were long. His eyebrows were perfectly designed and made. Allah. What does she say? She says, his neck was elegant, long. He had a thick beard. Beautiful black hair. She's still describing the beauty of Rasulullah. His voice had natural echo. A commanding voice. It was logical voice. As if pearls were coming out of his mouth when he spoke. Pearls were coming out. Pearls were coming out when he spoke. And not just that, he did not speak too long nor too short. His speech was perfectly timed. And not just perfectly timed, she says. She says, in Samata, when he was silent, there was an aura of respect around him. In Takallama, Samahu Alahul Baha. When he spoke, it was as if light was projecting from him. And she says it beautifully. She says, nas wa min ba'id. When you saw him from far, he was the most beautiful. min But when you saw him from near, he was also beautiful. And his companions would listen to him carefully. They would carefully, respectfully sit with him. And when he would say something, they would immediately fulfill what he wants them to say. This was the description of the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'm not saying that this description is not a description of just a human or just a man. This description is the description of that individual who has been made perfect by the perfect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why wa ahsana min kalam taraqattu aini wa ajmana min kalam talidin nisau khulikta mubarram min kulli aini Look at the beauty of Rasulullah <laughs> Such a beautiful description. And I've just summarized it for you. If you go on the physical description, you need months. You need? Months. Is it this beautiful Qasim Baba? We all want to see him. We all want to see what Umm Ma'bad saw. We all want to see what Abu Bakr saw. We all want to, and we will see him. We will see him. Ablajal Waj. Ablajal Waj. Let's describe this together. Abla, beautiful face, handsome. Ablajal Waj. Jabir bin Samura radiallahu ta'ala once came out, he saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, wearing a red cloak. It was a full moon's night. <coughs> he said, I saw the moon, then I saw the face of Rasulullah I saw the moon and see, this was the wazifa of the Sahaba. 
They didn't do anything. They just looked at the face of their beloved. <laughs> right? And we are upon the maslak of the Sahaba. Allah. Upon the path of Sahaba. He looks, he said, I looked at the full moon, I looked at the face again, again. I'm trying to see what is more shinier, what is more, more, more brightened, who is more beautiful. And he said, I came to a conclusion that the face of Rasulullah <laughs> was more beautiful than the full moon. <laughs> Subhanallah. What a beautiful face. This is why people spend hundreds and thousands and book tickets to go to the mountains and to see that full moon, that scenery. If you want to see beauty, come to Rasulullah. Come to Muhammad Rasulullah. That is his face. But she discussed this beautifully. In Samata, when he was silent, there was aura of respect. He was enveloped with, 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 with respect. In Takallama, Samahu Alahul Baha, when he spoke, as if light is coming out. Noor. You see, every lawgiver. Now look at the maqam of my Nabi and your Nabi. Every lawgiver in the history of mankind gives law through words, when he speaks, or through actions. So when he speaks, he gives a law. When he acts, that becomes a law. Except Rasulullah When he speaks, it becomes law. When he acts, it becomes law. Even when he's silent, that becomes law. This is the maqam of the silence of Rasulullah have you ever heard about a lawgiver who remains silent and even in silence is a law for the fuqaha? Look at the maqam. And she said a beautiful thing. Ajmalun nas wa abhahu min ba'id wa ahlahu wa ahsanuhu min qareeb. You see some individuals are beautiful from far. But when they come near, the beauty decreases. And some individuals are beautiful from near, but as soon as you go far, <laughs> except Rasulullah <laughs> He was beautiful from far and beautiful from near. <laughs> yani his beauty did not change. He was as beautiful as he was from far, as he was near. So when he was from far, I can see his beauty. When he was from cl close, near, I can see the exact same beauty of Rasulullah But what the Sufis and scholars mention, this near and far is not only with distance, but also with time. Also with time. Those who, who saw him from near said, And those who saw him from far said, those who saw him from close said he was like the moon. Those who saw him from far said, Lam yati naziru And don't worry, the people of Cape Town, you will also see him. You will also see him. Because he remembers you. He seeks forgiveness for you. He remembers you in his dua. He has remembered you whilst he was alive physically. He made dua for you. You will see him. When that time comes and we are in our graves and our grave is darkness in our grave, we may be, you know, shivering with fear because there's loneliness. There's no one there. But don't worry, that individual, that noor will come to enlighten your grave. And you will see the same noor Umay Mabad so. You will see the same noor Abu Bakr so. You will see the same Noor Umar so. You will see the same Noor Usman so. You will see the same Noor Ali so. You will see the same Noor Hassan and Hussein so. You will see the same Noor Ghari Nawaz so in Ajmer. You will see the same Noor Ghassi Adam so in Baghdad. You will see him. This is why I say, love him. Adhere to his commands. Wallahi Razim. He will enlighten your grave. And on the day of judgment, he will intercede for you and take you to Jannah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. 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 Subhanallah, beauty.
beauty of our Rasul. Beauty of our Rasul. I cannot explain it in words. I don't have words. His eyes, his ears. Sayyidah Aisha mentioned, this is mentioned in Ibn Asakir Baliban. She mentions that his ears were beautiful. Allah. And as we used to see at times, his hair, his hair next, to, uh, next to his ears. So his black, beautiful hair <coughs> next to his two ears, she said it was like two stars in the dark night. Oh. <laughs> eh? It was like two stars. two stars in the dark night. Look at the beauty. Two stars in the dark night. That is just the physical beauty of his ears. But the power of his hearing, that is something else. That is this, that we're talking about the physical features. This is the spiritual feature. The power of his hearing, Allah Akbar. He could hear what Jibreel had to say. Right? I do not know what's happening in my house. He can hear what the Malaika are saying. He said to Bilal, Bilal, what amal, what action do you do? I heard your footsteps in front of me in Jannah. Sufis mentioned Bilal has not even walked and he heard it. Look at the hearing of Rasulullah. Bilal has not even walked here. He can hear it. Sufis mentioned that if Rasulullah can hear the footsteps of Bilal before Bilal walks, then he can hear your salah and salam before you remove your lips. But his eyes, beautiful. Contrast, white was white, black was black. But that was the physical, the spiritual power of his eyes. Can anyone tell me what's happening in the living room right now? <laughs> Achha, can you see what is happening in the grave of this Waliullah? Can anyone see? On the night of Miraj, Marartu ala Musa. Allah. I passed by Musa, he was praying in his grave. <laughs> can you see what is happening? I'll make it easy for you, your house is far. Can you see what is happening just beyond these walls? Anyone? Rai to Jafaran. Yatiru fil Jannah ma'al malaika. He said, I saw Jafar flying with the angels in Jannah. <laughs> Look at the eyes. This is why many have come. Molana. Many have come, many will go. Every individual have eyes and vision. But no one has the vision of Rasulullah Many individuals will come. I have seen this city. I have seen this mountain. I have seen this wonder of the world. I have seen the Tabor mountain. I have seen this Cape Point. I have seen this jungle. I have seen this city. More powerful eyes would say. I have seen the angels. More powerful eyes would say. I have seen the first heaven and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. More powerful would say. I have seen the paradise. But all these visions are restricted to creation. But there is only one holder of eyes whose vision is not only restricted to the creation. Ra'aytu Rabbi fi ahsani surah. He says, I have seen my Lord. Not just the creation, I have seen the creator. However, Allah wanted him to see. Subhanallah. Look at the eyes of your beloved, my beloved. This is the power of Rasulullah. And shall I tell you, his eyes were perfectly created, they had perfect spiritual powers, and they had the perfect akhlaq. There were justice in his eyes. These eyes never put anyone down. These eyes respected the poor. These eyes were so beautiful in its inner meaning and they were so just that even Jews in Medina when they had disputes with Muslims 
would tell the Muslims, let's go to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Allah. Why? Because we know he will do justice. Allah. This is the inner beauty of the eyes of Rasulullah Allah. 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 When we talk about his eyes, we talked about his ears, even his legs. You're thinking, I'm going to go to Even his legs perfectly built straight, perfectly built. And not just that, look at this spiritual power. Mustad Al-Bazar, if you pick up uh, Mustad Imam Ahmad, there are various narrations. Sayyidina Ali was ill. Sayyidina Ali was Prophet passed by, asked what's the problem ill. Sayyidina Ali says, فَدَرَبْنِي بِرِجْلِهِ he hit me slightly with his legs. He hit me slightly with my leg. I was in pain, hit me with his leg and prayed for me. Sayyidina Ali said, I never faced that problem after that in my life. <laughs> Some people say, what is great in this? Sayyidina Isa used to cure people. Allah. Sufis mentioned that is true. Sayyidina Isa was a great prophet. A great prophet of Allah. Sayyidina Isa used to cure. But Sufis mentioned the cure which was in the breath of Isa was at the feet of Muhammad <laughs> This is your Rasul, this is my Rasul. The spiritual powers, the maqam. You talk about Sayyidina Isa with Rasulullah not just his feet, his hands were cured. His blessed beard was cured. His blessed saliva was cured. His breath was cured. His vision was cured. His presence was cured. Everything he touched was cured. Everything he saw was cured. And not just that, even his name, Salatu Salam, is cured. Allah. Ask Imam Busayri when he fell ill and he started writing Mawla Ayya Sallim wa Sallim and Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallam came in his dream and gave him cure. Allah. This is the maqam of our Rasul. Now do you understand the beauty of your Rasulullah Beauty of our Rasulullah Hence, we will discuss further. There are many, many narrations. Many, many narrations. Just his nur. His nur. The Sahaba used to mention that at times when you look at the face of Rasulullah his face was so bright, it was as if the sun was taking its light from his face and moved. <laughs> and was moving. It's like the sun. And this is why the Sufis mention the difference between the light of the sun and the light of Rasulullah is, is that the sun just gives you the light. Not the vision to see. <laughs> Sufis mention why? Because the sun is Sirajah <laughs> Mahaja. Rasulullah is Sirajah Munira. <laughs> His nur is unique. Sirajam. For example, now if you look at the nur of the sun and the nur of Rasulullah Sayyidah Aisha is stitching clothes. Needle falls on the floor. As soon as the Prophet comes, peace be upon him, through his lie, she immediately found the needle. So even whilst our sisters and mothers know while they're stitching clothes, and I think the, the brothers should also learn, don't just leave it on them. So when you lose a needle, even at times when there is light, you can't find it immediately. But this is the nur of Rasulullah Not just that it gives you the light, it gives you the vision to see. Yes. Sayyidah Amina says when Prophet was born, a nur came out. What came out? A nur came out. I could see the palaces of Syria. Allah. Where is Makkah? Where is Syria? Allah. This is the nur of Rasul. It doesn't just give you the light, it gives you the vision to see. And the closer you are, the more vision you have. The closer you are to Rasul, the more vision. See, say that Amina was close, she could see Syria. The closer you are, the closer you are, the better vision you have. This is why. The awliya and sufiya annihilated themselves in the love, in the adherence of Rasulullah to such an extent, they also had the vision 
through the lure of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Hazrat Khwaja Gharib Nawaz Muhyiddin Chishti, when he arrived in Samarkand, Maulana Abu Layth Samarkandi was there, and there was a masjid, and people were having arguments that this masjid is built, but Qibla is this way, this masjid is built that way, Qibla is this way. Engineers were there, builders were there, scholars were there, discussion upon discussion, arguments upon argument, people were fighting each other. Gharib Nawaz, the reflection of the Rasul, Nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there. He said, what is the problem? They said, we don't know where Qibla is. He said, I'll tell you, where the masjid is built, Qibla is there. So how do you know? Where is your calculations? Where is your examinations? Where are your experiments? He said, okay, come here. What do you see between, between my two fingers? They said, Wallahi, you see Kaabatullah. <laughs> This is the Noor of Rasulullah <laughs> Become close to that Noor. And not just that, we will end it. We're ending it now. You see, I say to a lot of my youngsters, you, go, you, you face a lot of problems. These competitions, caricatures, cartoons, right? It hurts you, isn't it? <coughs> How do you respond to that? The Denmark and what happened in France, the cartoons, it hurts us, isn't it? But how do you deal with that? Not with aggression. Deal it the way the Prophet dealt it. It's difficult. You see, I say to those who are trying to make cartoons and caricatures, because they're Islamophobic, they have problems with our Prophet, peace be upon him. And they think, they think they are drawing him. To draw someone, you need reference. You need a picture, you don't have his picture. You need a precise drawing, you don't have a precise drawing. Now, just, I challenge them, draw the face of Rasulullah Your pens will break. Your minds will melt. Your ink will run out. But you will fail in this task. Why? Let's look at the references that I'll give you. You want to draw it? Go on. Sahaba said he was, his face was like the sun. <laughs> draw it. Another narration. They said he was like the moon. <laughs> draw it. Another narration. Some said his face was like the page of Quran. <laughs> now draw Quran. I said your pen will break. Your mind will melt. You will never be able to draw anything close to the beauty of Rasulullah So what do they do when they are drawing cartoons and caricatures? How do we respond? We respond the way our beloved messenger responded. You see, we discuss about Muhammad, peace be upon him. The mushrikeen of Makkah used to criticize him. Islamophobia is not a new thing. It happened 1400 years ago, it continues. So they said, they used to call him crazy, astaghfirullah, mental, they used to call him magician. Yet, whilst they criticized him, they realized, hold on, we call him Muhammad and crazy? Allah. If he's Muhammad, then he cannot be crazy. If he's crazy, he cannot be Muhammad. Allah. So you, you're not making a fool out of him, you're making a fool out of yourself. You say the most praised is a magician. The most praised is crazy. If he's the most praised, he cannot be crazy. If he's Muhammad, so what they said, we will not call him Muhammad. This mention is Sahih Bukhari. We will not call him, we will call him Muzammam. The condemned one. So we'll say Muzammam is this, Muzammam is this. Prophet the Sahaba came to Ya Rasulullah, this is what they're doing. Prophet smiled and said, see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected me. Can you see how he's protected me? Allah Akbar. You see how he has protected me from the abuses and the curses of the Quraysh? They are criticizing, condemning, cursing Muzammam. Wa'ana Muhammad, I'm Muhammad. So your caricatures, your cartoons, your competition, your, your violence and aggression on Rasulullah Wasallam. whatever you draw, we say is something else. Nabi Muhammad. Our Nabi is Muhammad. 
But Sufis give another answer. Sufis give, and this is my last point, we end it. Sufis give another answer. This Maulana Rumi narrates this. Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi says, he says, once Abu Bakr who came in the presence of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, you're so beautiful. Prophet <laughs> <laughs> said, you have spoken the truth. <laughs> Rumi narrates, Abu Jahl came. And he said, Oh Muhammad, you're so ugly. Prophet said, you have spoken the truth. Allah. Sahaba question, Ya Rasulullah, we did not understand. Abu Bakr said, you're beautiful. Abu Jahl said, you're not. You said both of them are true. Prophet said, I am a mirror. Allah. Abu Bakr saw his own beauty. Allah. Abu Jahl saw his own ugliness. <laughs> Those who are drawing disrespectful cartoons, this is their own ugliness. Our Rasul is beautiful. Our Rasul is the mirror of the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the mirror. And a mirror of Jamal al -Aq. I am the mirror of the beauty of Allah. And this is why, just don't get emotional. Think that they are talking about someone else. Our Nabi is Muhammad. <laughs> don't get too emotional. Our Nabi is Muhammad. They will learn in this world. If not, in their grave. If not, then on the day of judgment. They will learn in the hereafter, in Barzakh. In reality, our Nabi was beautiful. And not just the most beautiful hands, the most merciful hands. The most generous hand, the most kind hands. Have you heard about a Sahabi called Julaibi? Mm. Very, very ugly in appearance, physical appearance. People used to taunt him. People used to abuse him. At times, they would criticize him. No one would sit next to him. There were only one pair of hands. I would show mercy to him. I would embrace and hug him. These were the hands of Muhammad Rasulullah. They held his hands, got him married. They held his hand gave him honor and respect. And these hands, when he was martyred in a battle, they picked his body and read his Salatul Janaza. Our Rasul was perfect. Simple, last sentence of today is the sentence of Sayyidina Ali. He described the Prophet from head till toe. If you read the Shama'id, from head till toe, he came to a conclusion. And this is my conclusion, this is your conclusion. Lam ara qablahu wala ba'dahu mithlahu. He described him and said, I have not seen anyone before him or after him who is like him. <laughs> Simple. So whatever we explain is our goodness. Why? Because the reality of Muhammad Rasulullah is only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to love the messenger of Allah as the Sahaba loved him, as the Ahlul Bayt loved him, as the Awliya and the Sufiya loved him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one and from may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give strength to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jamaah. Very, very important. Ahlul Sunnati remain on the creed of the Sahaba and the Ahlul Bayt. Love them together, honor them together. This is the message of Sunnism. This is Ahlul Sunnah. This will take you closer to Allah and His message on the day of judgment. Amen.